Servus and greetings from Vienna. My name is Anita Posch. Thank you for listening to Bitcoin und Co., my podcast that's introducing the philosophy, ideas and people behind Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Hello everybody, greetings from Vienna. It's still winter here and I'm looking forward to going to warmer places in Africa to do my podcast research in February. Last week, I was asking for support and donations for bringing Bitcoin nodes to the local communities. Somebody really donated 300 US dollars via the Lightning Network and tip in me. Many, many thanks to the unknown donor. I have already arranged several meetings with people, businesses and Bitcoiners for my trip. In Botswana, Alakanani Iterileng, the founder of Satoshi Center, will hold a Bitcoin meetup with me on the 29th of February. We also will set up a Bitcoin full note there. This and next week, I'm going to record several interviews for you. That will go out while I'm traveling. The African episodes will be published in March and April. Feel free to support my trip via PayPal, Bitcoin and Lightning. You can do this at bitcoinandco.com forward slash en forward slash donate. If you're representing a company and are interested in working together, please send me a message to hello at anitaposch.com, posh with a C. Thank you also to the LTB Network, the Let's Talk Bitcoin Network, for listing my show on their platform. The Let's Talk Bitcoin Network features other cool shows like Let's Talk Bitcoin, the original show with Andreas Antonopoulos and Adam Levine, the What Bitcoin Did podcast with Peter McCormick, who thankfully has also sponsored something for my journey, the Bitcoin Magazine podcast POV Crypto, the Tatjana Show, I will have Tatjana as a guest soon, so check out the Let's Talk Bitcoin Network on Twitter at the LTB Network and follow them. In the following interview, I will speak with Randy Brito. He is the founder of BitcoinVenezuela.com and the CEO of Locha Mesh. With the Locha Mesh device, one can send text, audio and Bitcoin without cell service or internet as long as the device has battery life. Locha Mesh nodes create high bandwidth long range decentralized radio networks to connect devices at up to 4 kilometers away from each other and relay information to reach longer distances. Before we start with this episode, a message from my sponsors. If you want to be independent and secure your personal financial freedom with Bitcoin, you have to hold your own keys and must not use a custodial wallet. So if you're one of the people who thinks of investing in Bitcoin long term in the most easy way and who prefers not to use a hardware wallet because it has to be maintained, doing firmware updates and more, or you just want to gift someone Bitcoin, then the card wallet is for you. You'll get one Bitcoin address, you can send Bitcoin to it, and all you have to do is to store it in a safe place. That's it. The manufacturers are the Austrian State Printing House, which is also responsible for the Austrian passports, and Coinfinity, Austria's first Bitcoin broker. Order your card wallet at cardwallet.com forward slash Anita and get 20% off. Now on to the show and as always you can find all recommendations and links mentioned in this episode in the show notes on the episode page at bitcoinandco.com. There you can also find a books page with all reading recommendations from my guests. bitcoinandco.com with an U. Please subscribe to my show in your favorite podcast player, come back for more episodes and share it on social media. I can remember we were talking yesterday, you were telling me about the word what locha mesh means. Can you repeat that, please? Yes, of course. Um, well, we call the project locha because locha is a very Venezuelan word and it is, it comes from a coin from the 1800s. Uh, and it is, uh, for, uh, the one eighth part of a silver coin. So it is in, in Spanish, when, when you refer to the one eight part, they were calling that la ochava, or like, which is like the eighth part of something. So 
o chava lo chava and you get it to locha mm -hmm. so that's the the but the word itself um is an expression right now in 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 the now what nowadays is an expression that resembles the money that you earn for your work so your income or the money that you make for yourself uh to live and that's that's the, the the money that you want to keep that that's the money that you don't want others to take from you so it remind me uh, a lot about bitcoin and it's at least venezuelan and it's connected because i'm venezuelan and the situation and that's how the idea came up so i prefer i i decided to use locha and the, there is the expression in venezuela uh referring this uh, how they use it today is la lucha por la locha so it's like how you doing and so people answer you this i'm in la in la lucha por la locha it's like what we saying is i'm i'm in the fight for them my for my money right and so we our project think that we are in la lucha for la, por la locha libre so we are looking for the free money as in freedom mm -hmm. and the devices support or are the uh, foundation of uh, being able to do so that would be is that the idea i mean yeah these the, the devices let you not only communicate privately and securely but also to send bitcoin transaction completely anonymously mm -hmm. so you can send like one offline transaction to the device and the device makes some hops to others and and, and then gets published to the bitcoin network and it's added to a block and no one can tell that it was you there is no ip address connected to you there is no id sms no one scan your face in order to be able to get a sim card so it's basically you, you can basically build that in your house and have it like um make it with the uh, pieces that you have on a, of a router, open WR, the WRT router that you have in your house and you build it yourself and then you broadcast a transaction through it and it's completely anonymous and private. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great name for a great idea. But how does it work? I mean, when there is no internet, how do you get information about the next block or about how to, how are you sending out a transaction, a transaction? Well, uh, our devices, uh, that we are building, are um, nodes themselves. So they are capable of having enough information inside of them to be able to tell what other devices are around it, around it. So there is not a central uh, server keeping like a map of everyone, but each node keeps the map of devices around them that are needed for delivering the message so each device by itself is capable of telling like oh, okay this is the path that i need to find or or i can try this path to deliver the message in this case in this case the message could be a message like a text message which is the main idea because it's the most common use but it, this text message can also be an already offline signet bitcoin transaction or a pre-image for a lightning transaction. And what we find out this past year that we have been working on this uh, project was that other attempts on making this mesh network devices ha are have focus focus on on things that as I said before, it's like sharing internet or sell your internet because you have it and others don't or, or share your internet data. So it is cheaper for you. Um, the difference on that is that we thought about your question. We thought about how would you check the balance of your Bitcoin wallet? If you don't have internet, how will you, uh, okay, now you have a, a offline signet Bitcoin transaction, but how will you uh, get this transaction to a miner? So it is added to a block. So we started working on a prototype that it was very limited on its physical technology. So it's like it, the bandwidth was very limited. We were using LoRa. Uh, modulation. We were using a lot of antennas too, um, using the ESP32, which is a very small device, which is the, the one carrying the, the, the screen that we use for development only. But we realized um, a few months ago that we needed it to make it like a step forward. So now we have a prototype that is capable of making 10 times the bandwidth 
So you are capable of sending not only a text or, or uh, offline signal Bitcoin transaction, but you are also capable of sending block data. So you can share the blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain data between one device and another. So if one device has access to the Bitcoin blockchain and the other doesn't, for example, I'm completely offline, I can still uh, get information from the blockchain data from my neighbors that have a, a node running. And that other device could also be completely disconnected from the internet, like myself, but he has, for example, a satellite dish and he is downloading the blockchain data from the blockstream satellite. So he has it because that way he has his Bitcoin node completely uh, synced with the Bitcoin network. So he is, he is more like a, what we call it's an RPA node, which is a node like the others ones in the mesh network, but they also offer you a service. A service like Watchtower or Lattice blockchain data or the Bitcoin mempool, things that he can take from other places because he has internet or he has a satellite dish and he offers it to other mesh node devices that don't have it, like block, uh, Bitcoin uh, broadcasting and um, Watchtower services and things like that. And how far is the reach of this uh, node devices? Well, this was one of the limitations that we found on the first uh, prototype that we made. Um, so we, we are working on making it as capable of delivering on the promises. So we want it to work. Um, this, it's meant in the urban areas to give you between two kilometers, four kilometers long distance between one device and the other. And it then uses the hops. Um, and finding the path and doing all uh, everything it needs to deliver the message longer lo in a longest distance, it can do it. Just using the hops between one device to another, and we use in our protocol a way to uh, to like guess the path that you need to for the message to be delivered. So we are not spamming our network with like uh, doing basically a broadcast like uh, gel to all the devices to a gel to devices around me because I want the message to be delivered. That is not a good way to do it because you will be spamming the network. So um, like uh, this is one of the limitation of other uh, devices like this one and the, in the previous uh, prototype too. And now we are capable with our product, our own protocol, which is going to be uh, open source to tell like I should be getting this path or this other so you don't need to expand the network to deliver the message. So you can get like two kilometers, four kilometers distance. And at least if you have an, another device in that radio distance in, in an urban urban area, you will be in the same mesh. Mm -hmm. But isn't there one point where I need to have a gateway into the internet? Yes, some devices, as explained, have services, and one of those services could be a gateway to the internet. Uh, those are known as gateway or border routers because they connect the mesh with other networks, which could be the internet is one of, of the other met networks it could be connected to. So he basically work as a bridge. So they get the information from the mesh and then deliver it to whatever uh, other network they need, like internet, for for example, delivering a broadcasting a Bitcoin transaction to the Bitcoin network, for example. To, so it gets added to mempools. So that's one of the services, this border route there. Yeah, but then the, the, the blackout uh, has to be stopped. I mean, the, the, the power has to be back again, or? Well, you, you just need to reach one node that is connected to both networks. So in that way, you can like do as many hops as you need to get to one node mm -hmm. that is connected to both internet and also the mesh. So it can yeah. help you to broadcast a transaction, for example. Yeah, but I mean, in the worst case, if you have like uh, in, a, in the half of the country, no power for like two weeks, mm -hmm. then you can't use it or... Well, you can still attach these devices to bigger antennas. So you can like do 20 kilometers, 70 kilometers distances with more power. So you can connect countries okay. uh, inside the same mesh. So you can like get a message from one city to another city and it does, it's just, it still hasn't found a way out of the mesh itself, the local mesh 
inside that two city that are connected, but you get to a node that have a very big antenna that is capable of delivering the message like 70 kilometers long. You can even go through borders um, in that way that other country may have internet connection. And even if the, it doesn't, uh, Bitcoin full nodes right now talk to each other through the internet. But it's also possible for the um, for the others uh, Bitcoin full nodes to also run on the mesh. So you can have an alternative communication channel between Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin full nodes that they can talk directly to to each other through the mesh. So you don't need to go to the internet, which gets you first through your ISP service, the uh, service and your cables. And then it goes to a, uh, maybe a server in Europe or the US. From there, you go to another ISP and that ISP connects you to another Bitcoin full node. You now have a direct connection through radio with other Bitcoin nodes. For example, you can even have this attached to one server in in Prague or in Germany that connect um, miners, for example. So you will get the transaction not only from the internet, but also from the mesh. So you, if you are a miner, you get the, the uh, uh, offline signal Bitcoin transaction from the mesh and you can add it to a block already. So you are, you are receiving the information from the block string uh, satellite, for example, like Bitcoin transactions. Um, that have been sent through the messaging API that they have, um, that needs to be somehow added to a block, but you want to do it like privately. So you don't want to post it yourself to send it through this mess, this, uh, API messaging system. But you also get it from the mesh network and also one from the internet. Now you have like three communication channels completely different, but you are getting all three transactions and added into a block. And in that, that way, we will have, um, uh, completely censorship resistant, a communication channel alternative to the internet that doesn't have to like use Tor when in some country is completely blocked. It's very difficult to use it. You will have a more direct um, censorship resistant, resilient communication system with them because um, even if someone gets in the middle, they cannot read the information that goes from one node to another because it's completely um encrypted the communication and not only is encrypted, but if I get into the middle of those two devices, I don't know where they are because they are um, portable and they can be moving around. And But I can get into the middle and put a huge antenna and make jam the, the radio communications because I don't want them to talk to each other uh, privately. And even if you do that, you can still find a path in another way and you get to the, the to deliver the message at the end. And even if you have to get like, go around from one country to another, you will get the message delivered. And um, it's a there's a battery inside, okay. so it, it there's a battery inside. Yes. Yes. So what happens when my device when the battery runs out and I don't have any other battery anymore? Um, so then it's not connected anymore to the mesh. Uh, and then I reconnected it. Does it, um, what's on the device? Yeah. Is there any uh, blockchain data on it? Or how does it work? Well, the, the device itself is, a um, has only one purpose, which is being a node inside the Locha mesh, right? So it is, um, it, it, um, very low consumption um, um, of battery energy. So it is capable of running like for two days, only delivering messages in low energy. So if you are not actively using it as your, um, your in this case, your connection to the mesh, it, it is capable of relaying mes messages for others for several days. Um, it doesn't have a screen, so it, it, it very low um, battery consumption. consumption. Um, even if, if, if you, uh, like ran out of the house b electricity power grid because it, it, there is a blackout, you can still work, uh, make it work on solar panels because of the very low, uh, electricity consumption that you have. Um, you, you, you can also like add, um, like connect directly through the USB cable. You can connect it to a power bank, which now are like, uh, 
21,000 million amperes. So it is like, I don't know, it's like running for a whole week without running out of battery. So it is very resilient on that. Mm -hmm. So you can make it like attach it to uh, a kit for hiking that now come with very small solar panels that you can have, have in your backpack. That's enough for this node to be okay. able to work. So it doesn't have to sync anything. It only sends and uh, receives transactions. Yeah, it, it relays it. So, yeah. It only keeps information about the other nodes around them, mm -hmm. and this and this way they they know what nodes are like very close to them or enough reach uh, to deliver a message. But they also keep like their their neighbors' information, so that you you can basically like, try to calculate the path. So that's what basically what they do. If if one of them goes down, most probably the others around them keep part of that ma uh, map. So they couple of like sharing with other. Or okay, I am um, when you uh, turn it up, um, turn it on. Yeah, they basically um, make a hello to the others. I'm here and I know this other guy. So you can keep the information of us both to deliver messages through us. That's basically what the devices do when you turn them on. Mm -hmm. And is it connected to you? Do I need a, a wallet on my smartphone or on a computer? And which one would I use? Well, the devices talk to each other through um, sub, -giga sub gigahertz radio. So it's capable of making long distances. Um, the, the amount of data that you can send in this case is like messages, images, radio, uh, like voice recording, very small ones and binaries. So you can also like, I don't know, like uh, browse a uh, censorship resistant website, for example, or read the news, even if they are blocked in your country, you can still do that through this. Um, what, what you need to be able to use it, it, it is like a hotspot or a router with a battery. So it, it what you use it is your phone, your smartphone, and you connect to it through the Wi-Fi. So it's basically a router, so you can connect to it through Wi-Fi. And in your phone, what you will need is, our, is an app. In this case, our Turpial chat app is a chat, uh, it's an app, an open source app that lets you send uh, messages, like a chat, like a WhatsApp. Uh, but instead of using the internet to deliver the message, it uses the Locha Mesh network. So You can send text messages, you can send images, you can send Bitcoin transactions, you can do like a SOS message and broadcast this message to ask for help and things like that. And, and you can, you will be able to build your own apps and then use our um, SDK or, or basically go to GitHub and copy the part of the uh, communication with the device. So you can have like, a, I don't know, a, web browser that only connects through this uh, mesh network in order to access um, censorship resistant website, for example, or IPFS uh, store data, for example, or or make it like work through the mesh network to share your internet. If you want to sell your internet that you have, because you do have internet in your house, you can basically sell it and get paid in Bitcoin and Lightning network. Okay. So... I wouldn't use like Electrum for it, for instance. I mean, if I have Electrum on my smartphone and want to send a transaction over the mesh network, mm -hmm. I would then have to go to the your open source app. Well, or, or you, can I use Electrum too? You will use Electrum, but as your phone is offline, it asks you to, you want to share this offline signal Bitcoin transaction and you click share and you will be able to select our app to share this uh, hash of the transaction. So it can be a raw transaction. So it can be added to a block uh, after um, sharing it through the mesh network and it has reached reach a gateway or a miner directly. Okay, understood, yeah. So you can use any web and any app uh, wallet that you already have. So you can basically just do an offline transaction and mm -hmm. then share it through the mesh. Mm -hmm. Understood. And what's the uh, business idea behind? I mean, is it a business idea or is it more a contribution uh, to to uh, Bitcoin and uh, to the freedom of people? Well, it started as a open source only, like based on donations project. And it went well, I think. It was like, I don't know, like 
a few thousands of dollars, but it's not enough to make this kind of project a reality. So we came up with the idea of making uh, devices that are more like a plug and play that you won't need to download anything from GitHub and all the stuff because some people don't want to learn about it or don't know how to do it, at, but they still want to be able to make encrypted censorship resistant messages and Bitcoin payments. So we came up with the idea of making our own devices with our own board that we have we are testing right now and this has uh this it has we have received some investment for this company that we have set up and um, we incorporated in delaware and uh, this company that is uh right now um taking care of making the good looking uh plug and play devices but we are also um managing and and contributing to the open source software and open source hardware that so anyone can build their own and they and, and download from GitHub or the software or make their own software and their own app. So there are a couple also building them, even if they don't want to buy it from us. But the way of, of buying from us the devices already uh, made is a way for us to continue working on the open source software too. Mm -hmm. A question to the distribution, I mean, the network effect, because, I mean, I imagine if I buy one of these devices and put it on in my home, I have nobody around using the same device. Yes, on the fr in the early days, it's going to be difficult for the devices to be able to, like, make enough um, density of devices for the messages to be delivered. That's why we're also thinking on the company as a um, integrator. So we are, we are thinking on the company also as a way to like put big antennas for some for, for some services or 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 companies who wants to be able to talk to each other sec securely privately. For example, we can put like three four antenna in a city so we can connect one city to other. Uh, through this alternative communication system or connect like, I don't know, it's like several offices of the same company in a city. So if we have these big antennas capable of delivering messages, you will, in the early days, as there is not enough density of the small devices, you will still have big devices, like big antennas delivering the message for you because you will be the only one carrying one, one of the small one, for example. But there will be big ones. And that's the um, on, on the... Um, network effect obviously is going to be difficult in, in the early days mm -hmm. to get enough density for the messages to be delivered, but we are working on it to make it more like a standard. So you are, you have incentive to have one and have it running because you also want to use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, coming to mind for me is like, uh, China. I've read that even foreign companies are surveillance. So, um, they cannot, uh, Uh, communicate anymore without being surveilled by the Chinese government. And I guess for them, this kind of technology would be very interesting. Yeah, they have an incentive like to have a node. And they also have the incentive to add one of the, our Turpial nodes to a big antenna so they can like um, offer the message, private and secure Uh, messages in the system to their employees, for example, so they can have like really uh, verifiable private communication with their employees without anyone looking into the communication that they are having, right? So the, this go is going most probably to be the way uh, that the, in the early days we will have the network working. Uh, but when there, there are enough devices of this uh, around, it will be enough like to have I don't know, it's like a dozen of them in one city is, is going to be enough for like you like arrive to that city and be able to send messages. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there also might be a new world of social media apps coming around that can be used with that technology? So being independent from like the, the local host or provider? Yeah. The, the, the idea is that you will be able to build any uh, app on top of the network when It has um, enough density of, um, and avail availability, but the, the, that's why we are doing this open source software, not only because you will be able to verify what it is doing and how the messages are being encrypted, how they are being delivered, how your app communicates with the device or you 
actually tell if it's secure or not. But it's also because we want it to be like a standard. So we want people to build on this. We, we want people to make it like connected to uh, other nodes and be capable of like uh, getting information from IPFS servers or DAP node server that now run or novel eat and CASA nodes. So you can basically attach this to it. And if you mm, copy from GitHub, uh, the part of the code that lets you communicate with the device or you build your own uh, communication system with the device and your full node. So you will be able to do, uh, like provide services, um, a store a website, for example, you can use like a server um, where you have your website and provide it through the mesh. So you, uh, other the users can connect to your server directly, not through the internet, going through the ISP where they are being looked at, where the um, certificates are backdoor and all the stuff. No, you connect to the person directly that you want to get the block from. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds cool, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> Uh, and what's your plan for the next month with the product? Well, we are currently testing the boards, but our our idea is to get to a finished product that we can start delivering to developers. So they can start building things and we, they can start testing, like making, um, putting them in, on, on the ground and seeing how, how, how long the distance is actually uh, capable of doing and what's the amount of information that you can uh, send from one node to another, how many hops can you do before reaching a, a gateway and all stuff. So we want this to be like bef before the end of the year, at least the, the, the development kit. And that's where we are currently working on. Mm -hmm. And are you then looking for like contributors or people who are doing, yeah, you just said you're looking for developers who develop new. Yeah, so we are not only looking for developers. Uh, we, we are also like, um, the, this open source software is uh, managed by the um, non-for-profit organization BitcoinVenezuela.com. The, the Spider is a company which is building the hardware that is going to be sold. Although this, uh, a part of the project is open source and open hardware, so you, you, the, the one of the things we are looking at not not only on contributions for the open source uh, software and hardware, but also for the company if they want us to continue working on the uh, open source software. We are looking uh, for investors to get enough money to, to work on this full time. Um, for uh, in, in return, we offer then uh, a profit for the devices that will uh, that are going to be sold, uh, like a plug and play that most people, like the common users will end up buying, but that will enable us to work on the open source part of it and, and on the standard and making it like um, appealable to the development community. Okay, thank you. We're coming to an end now. Was there anything left out? Do we want to add anything? Yes, we are working on the devices that we are going to sell, the plug and play look good looking ones, but we are open to any suggestion on how to fund the project in any other way. So if we are capable of you know, spending a full time in, in the project in any other way that is not making our own devices, but keeping it completely open source and open hardware that we are go also going to do, we are open to any suggestion on how to fund the project, how to get enough uh, support from others and how we can make the project as a standard so it, there are enough density of devices and also apps and, and integrations. So we are looking for that. Mm -hmm. And you're presenting uh, the device on Sunday or Saturday at the Lightning Conference. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. They're going to present the project. Yeah. And as far as I know, there will be a video recording on YouTube then. That's for the listeners now. I will put that in the show notes. Also, the link to the talk. <laughs> well, that my, my personal recommendation on um, all these matter, Venezuela, economics, Bitcoin, and the mesh, is that there is um, an uh, something very important that we are losing right now, which is our privacy. So this is something that most people should be looking at. And this is what we are trying to build. It's yeah, that's awesome. true. But many people don't see that. Like they, they think they don't have to because I have nothing to hide, you know. 
Yes, and uh, in this in this situation, for example, the the case of Hong Kong right now, that you have like not you are not able to talk to others about anything because you are uh, suspected of trying to uh, undertake the power of the government, which is it's a joke because you are just an individual and there are a huge government. But it's important to also be capable of keeping like private communications or anonymity, which is something that we are trying to bring with the Locha Mesh network and Locha Mesh apps and, and, and everything. For example, one thing that uh, we ask the community to help us is how will we be able to deliver the app to the phone of the users if that person doesn't have internet on the first place? And more importantly, even if they have internet, I wouldn't trust Uh, like 100% on them downloading the app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. So there should be a way to do it. We are thinking on ways on how to do it. Like the devices that we are going to sell, we most probably will add like an APK or, or, or whatever we can add in the device so people can connect to it and download the app from the device itself because they are trusting not on, on when they bought the device from us, but they, we ask the community for help on the encryption, help on how to deliver the apps securely to them, how to make them like their deterministically built and all the things that we are uh, learning right now. So there, there must be people that could help on the, help us on that. So, yeah. And um, where can people follow your work uh, and uh, maybe buy the devices one day? Yeah, the website is locha.io, L-O-C-H-A dot I-O. And the Twitter is locha underscore IO. So you can follow there to learn how the project is going, but also when we are going to publish the device if you want to buy them. Mm -hmm. Or send you a message when you want to contribute. Yeah, you can yeah. send a message. You can connect to, to GitHub. Uh, we have it uh, at github.com slash btcving slash locha. So you, there you can find all the guidelines on how to contribute, how to make um, pull requests, or if you want to suggest things on, on the issues section. Mm -hmm, great. Okay, dear listeners, you can find that on the show notes on the episode page under bitcoinandco.com slash en. And then look for Locha Mesh or Randy Brito. Thanks, Randy. That was a great chat we had i think and i wish you all the best for your product and also for your talk and i hope we'll see you soon again thank you bye thank you for listening i hope you've enjoyed this episode you can support me via paypal bitcoin and lightning at bitcoinandco.com forward slash en forward slash donate And as always, this is a podcast, not financial advice. Please do your own research. If you like my show, please subscribe to it in your podcast player and share the episode on social media. You can find all links that were mentioned in the show notes on the website or in your podcast player. You can contact me also on Twitter, LinkedIn or YouTube. Goodbye from Vienna of Wiederhören. Music, start with yes, delicate beats. Idea, content and production, yours truly, Anita Posch. <laughs>